All right, number nine in this beast called Santa Claus. We have seen religion. We have seen science. We have seen lies. We have seen Jesus removed from stories. There ought to be no reason for the Christian to continue with this. But we're going to continue with this lesson. We're going to get it all. Christ Kindle. C-H-R-I-S-T-K-I-N-D-L. And remember, that's German. That goes back to Martin Luther, which means Christ child. In Germany, the Christ child, I'm saying it wrong, is the bringer of gifts for children. Who brings gifts at the end of the year? All right, so this is one of the same. If not, they're running a parallel course. According to the legend, Martin Luther was distressed over the growing popularity of St. Nicholas. All right, so Martin Luther was against St. Nicholas. Martin Luther thought the belief in St. Nicholas took away from the true meaning of Christmas, which was to be which was to celebrate the birth of Jesus. Well, Christmas is not the birth of Jesus. You check Christmas out. I've got a video on that. It's a pagan holiday worship. Now that you know, I learned something since then. If you were to conceive on Easter Rabbit Day, do you know what time that child would be ready to be born from the womb if it's proper? The infant child. The little chocolate bunny would be born on Christmas Day. Hollow. Therefore, he is credited with introducing the Christ kind to Germany and parts of Switzerland. The Christ kind, usually portrayed by a young girl, uh oh, uh, let me get this. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Santa Claus, Santa Barbara. Santa is a Spanish feminine title. San Diego is a Spanish male. And in 2016, this guy that comes December 25th does not know which bathroom to use. Because he's a Santa, female, Claus, male. I guess he can go into Target. And when he picks up his toys at Target, he can go into the, whatever bathroom he wants to use. Target's giving an opportunity. They watch him be open 24 hours on Christmas Eve so he can go to the party. Christ is usually portrayed as a young girl with a golden crown and drum roll please. Remember from number eight? Wings. Where would you see something like this on Christmas? I'm going to think back now. A girl with a crown and wings. Wouldn't that be on top of the Christmas tree? Remember, Martin Luther never separated from the Catholic Church. He just redefined the Catholic Church. Protestants are Catholics that just try to clean up the broom closet a little more. Is the main attraction to Christmas parties as she passes out presents to the other children I don't know why the other children was why not all children so we have mr. Nicholas going to Santa Claus going to Jesus Christ and in between now we have Martin Luther's Chris Kingo whatever you want to call his name Christ kind whatever we'll call him Chris Kingo Christy Chris if you like the fire Christy. Nowhere are we told to celebrate any birthday, especially Jesus, because we don't even know his birthday. Which, of 66 books, the date is unknown. Except for the Mary and Joseph. And the taxing government of Rome. It can be, it can be assembled by scripture, but no one knows the date but God. I mean, scripture is scripture, we can... But we can. You know, it's funny that the remarkable dates that we do know in the Bible, and yet we don't know the birthday of our Savior. 
Mary, Joseph, and Jesus themselves know the date. Jesus and the Holy Spirit chose for us not to know. Even the date December 25th testifies of itself it was not the day and that it is a day of paganism and not Christianity. Now there's a difference. You can call yourself a Christian. The media can call you a Christian and you may not be one. During the 18th century, German and Swift immigrants settled in Pennsylvania and brought the tradition of Christ Kindle with them. Over time, as the English settlers began to populate the area, the word Chris, Chris, what is C H R I S T K I N D L was simplified to Chris Kringle. So when you use this word, Chris Kringle, come on, Christian, you are using a meaning that means Christ like. We've we gone all with Christ's child. Wait a minute. You are calling a guy Chris Kringle and the name means Christ child. You are calling that guy Jesus Christ. Or Ezekiel 28 speaks of another being that is anointed. Satan. The priests were anointed. <clears throat> the Levites there's more than one Christ there is a Christ that is the gift of God and there is a Christ that brings gifts toys so what's the main thing in churches today let's give children toys let's give them good time let's give them gifts for learning scripture and everything like that in honor of Jesus Christ of course So what is, what is the name change? What are we trying to focus ourselves on? What are we trying to get for God's approval here? Now you may say, Brother Stiley, you're crazy. No, I'm a Bible believer. Let's look at the name changes in the Bible. Abraham, Sarai, or Abram, Sarai, Jacob, and Simeon. They all were changed by who? God. God changed their names. So changing Christ's kind name is to do what God did in the Bible. We're going to call, call this Christ kind. We're going to call him Chris Kringle now because we can find that Jesus told Peter, your name was Simon, now you're Peter. So we are doing something biblical here. We are changing names. And listen, this is nothing new. This is my own family. My grandma was named Helen, but she wanted to be called Janet. You got tons of people out there. They want to be called by nicknames. Where'd you get that from? You stole it out of the Bible. You figure if God can do it, so can you. My name is Styley. It's a family name. I have never changed it. And it's a name that's been a blessing. It's a name that's been a curse. But that's my name. And God is not going to come down in 2016 or in the turn of the church. Sorry, we're going to change your name. No. The Bible's sealed. It's closed. It's finished. Unless you're Christ kind or Chris Kingo or Santa Claus or whatever you want to be. God never changed a Chris Kingo. Man did. Now get that down. The Christmas man, Netherlands and Belgium. Father Christmas, French. 16th century England under Henry VIII, the spirit of good cheer of Christmas, giving news of Christ's birth. Christmas encourages everyone to eat and drink. Really? Giving the news of Christ's birth. Let us see what really happened by the Bible's record. Okay? Luke 2, 7 to 20. She brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger. Didn't say any cows, horses, asses, or anything was there according to the Psalms. 
but there was no room for them in the inn. If you were to ask me, I think that would be for sheep. If you know what I mean. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord, that's remarkable if you know your Bible, the angel of the Lord, uh, he's over there in the manger, <laughs> came upon them. And the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. I sang a hymn last, well, I didn't sing it, but, you know, the baby Jesus in, in the and he just shone, what, he had a 90 what, light bulb or something? Kept the rest of the family awake in the, in the place because he shone. I don't think so. Lord shone around about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto him, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. He said that. He didn't sing it. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Jewish, 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 Jewish. Is Santa Claus Jewish? And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swollen clothes, lying in a manger. Suddenly there was with, an, with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. It came to pass as the angels were going away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, let us now go even to Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass. See, they knew where David was born. The angels never said anything about Bethlehem. They said the son of David. And the Lord had made known unto him, and they came with haste. They ran, found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in the manger, sighing. And when they had seen it, they made known aboard the saying which was told them concerning this child. They went out and witnessed. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. So all of Bethlehem knew eventually that that baby was born by shepherds with a mouth. Romans 10, 9 and 10. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. There is the nativity scene. No chef, I mean, no magi, no gold, no silver, no frankincense. They rejoiced, yes, and they became a witness. They did not get drunk. Christmas encourages everyone to eat and drink. <laughs> Remember that drunken Santa in England? <laughs> hey, how you doing? You want to give me another drink? I gotta go to our house. So now we've seen this Christmas season wrapped up and let's get drunk. And do you know what comes out in magazine ads around Christmas? Alcoholic ads. Wow. The rise of Puritanism has led to an increasing condemnation and condemnation of the tradition, thank God, handed down from the pre-Reformation times. Especially mutual feasting and drinking. So by the time the Puritans step in, man, it's just get drunk. Christmas, drunk. Like TV. Every single one of these TV programs, movies or television programs, guy, hi, how you doing? Oh, let me come to, you want a drink? Count how many times on your TV program when they come into the house, want a drink? When I go to church, somebody says, how you feeling? Oh, I'm feeling good. When on television, how you doing? Want a drink? Oh, as the debate intensified, those writing in support of traditional celebrations often personified Christmas as a respected, kindly old gentleman given to good cheer but not excess. So, Mr. Puritan, see, Christmas is this old man, and he drinks, according to the English, but he doesn't drink too much. What is that today? Drink, but drink responsibility. See, it's my job that God's given to me by the Holy Spirit to show you what's going on out in the world. 
God is like me to enlighten you that everything that's happening is happening for a reason. They would think, tis the season. But there's a reason. And this season is not the reason for Jesus. That is so you can buy some buttons, beads, and junk from the supplier. Jesus is not the reason for the season because it's not even his season. It would be fall. But we'll go on. They referred to the image, tradition image, as Christmas, Old Christmas, or Father Christmas. You go back to the eight other lessons we've done. A license to drink. You didn't think we were going to get an alcohol, did you? But not too much. When was the last time you heard a man drunk and say that before he got drunk? Well, I'm not going to have too much. I know my limit. I know when to stop. I've heard. Father Christmas is also found in C.S. Lewis's The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. 19 That's a great thing to have. This Christ. Jesus, the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. That sounds like Saw. Doesn't it? Oh, you don't know about Saw? Music. 1977, the Kinks. Kinks. Man, when I get a kink in my leg in the middle of the night, my wife knows it. I'm screaming out in pain. The Kinks recorded the song, 1977, Father Christmas. Call no man your father upon this earth, for there is one that... I uh, can't quote that verse completely. The Kinks were in English... See where we're going? You see now how we are now looking at a nation called England. Where our Bible came from. And now look at the junk they're coming from. Where that queen has, a, has knighted a sodomite openly. An English rock band from a from, formed in Muswell Hill, North London, by brothers Ray and David, David Davies in 1964. Categorized in the United States as a Brit British invasion band, the Kinks are recognized as one of the most popular, powerful rock groups, rock groups, that's in churches, of the era. So now we see rock and roll in Christmas as it is now in the churches and fairly approved without any protests. Rocking around the Christmas tree, have a holly jolly Christmas. 1974, Greg Lake of Emerson, Lake, and Palmer wrote and recorded the song, I Believe in Father Christmas, which was released as a single in 1975. 1997, album pop U2 cites Father Christmas in a song, If God Will Send His Angels. U2 are an Irish rock band from Dublin, formed in 1976. Brings peace, joy, good food. Feast day, December 25th, coincides with Christmas. A Victorian image, Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol. The ghost, Odin, we talked about that last time. Christmas present with a green coat. This Santa Claus is a pyramid scheme. Religion, science, rock music, countries. Okay, now, next, Thomas Nast. Among his notable works was the creation of the modern version of Santa Claus and the political symbol of the elephant for the Republican Party. Now, look at that. Nast was associated with the magazine Harper's Weekly from 1859 to 1860 and from 1862 unto 1886. A frequent subject in Nast's cartoons are anti-Catholicism. Nast was baptized as a Catholic at the St. Maria Catholic Church in Landu and for a time received Catholic education in New York City. When Nass converted to Protestantism, remains unclear. 
but his conversion was likely formal upon his marriage in 1861. The family was practicing Episcopalians. Remember that came up? That was like two lessons ago. Go back and find the Episcopalians in Santa Claus's line at St. Peter's in Morristown. Nass considered a Roman Catholic church a danger to American values. I'll give him credit there. But his Episcopal church, his Protestant church, is also a child of Mother Church. And often, often depicted the Irish Catholics and Catholic Church leaders as hostile terms. Protestant aim is to clean the Roman Catholic Church, but yet keep the Roman Catholic Church ordinances, practices, sacraments. What is it they say? A Protestant is one that does the math. The mass does not in Latin. American cartoon, cartoonist, modern image. 1863 Harper's Weekly, May also be responsible for creation of the North Pole December 29, 1866. Engravings title, quote, Santa Claus and his works, unquote, with the caption, quote, Santa Clausville, capital N period, P period, unquote. So the North Pole seems to come from Thomas Nast in his cartoon found in the 1863 Harper's Weekly. So I guess Santa Claus never lived anywhere but until 1863 he moved in. 1869 published works with George P. Webster's poem, Santa Claus and His Works. Not of works, least any man should boast. Who wrote Santa's home? Who wrote Santa's home is near the North Pole? September 21st, 1897, editorial, Is There a Santa Claus? New York Sun, New York Sun, replied, Yes, Virginia, there's a Santa Claus. So, North Pole was not original. The Santa Claus that came much out much later by a magazine and a cartoonist now we're going to look at something else dear editor quotes I am eight years old some of my little friends say there is no Santa Claus Papa says if you see him in the Sun it is so you Christians know the words I'm expressing. Please tell me the truth. Is there a Santa Claus? Virginia O'Hanlon, O-H-A-N-L-O-N, 115 West 95th Street. End of quote. Why did not Virginia or her father go to a preacher? the pastor because we've already seen the Episcopal Church we've seen the Catholic Church lie 1897 in America a little girl eight could not or did not get the truth from her father nor sought the church but ran to the newspaper to find the truth when Jesus said I'm the way the truth and the life sanctify them through thy word thy word is true We go to the newspaper rather than go into the Bible. That's where we are in America in 1897. So, quote, Virginia, your little friends are wrong. Evidently, he hasn't heard this report. They have been afflicted, affected by the skepticism of a skeptical age. They do not believe except they see. That's faith. This guy, this writer, just attacked my faith. I have not seen Jesus Christ, and yet I believe. And 400 plus witnesses have seen the resurrected Jesus Christ, and no one ever has seen Santa Claus. 
My faith is based upon a witness. They think that nothing can be which is not comprehensible by their little minds. What if they were intelligent? What if they had... Man, he downplays her friends. All minds, Virginia, whether they be men's or children's, are little. Including yours, idiot. In this great universe of ours, man is a mere insect. Evolution. An ant. Bible says, go to the ant, thou sluggard. An ant has more than, than a, a person who's lazy, according to the Bible. In his intelligent, I can never say it, as compared with the boundless world about him, as measured by the intelligence capable of grasping the whole of truth and knowledge. I grasp the whole truth and knowledge and wisdom by God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Going about this report is Virginia's friends wrong. What does an eight-year-old know about skeptic? He uses his big words on an eight-year-old. I believe, you know, pastors do that too. They use big, formidable words in front of their congregation, and they don't know what it is. But it makes them look improper. It makes them look educated. It makes them put up on the thing that they know something that us little people do not allow to see. We don't know nothing. He's a big man with big words. Sewage. I believe in Jesus and have not seen him. I must be a skeptic in the eyes of the newspaper. And to them, I am. I resent that remark. I am not a skeptic. I'm a Bible-believing Christian by faith. Little minds. I have so great thoughts, dreams, and ideas. Insect. Evolution. Ants are smart, the Bible says, and so are... It's, wait a minute. Ants are smart, the Bible says, and so does the sciences. You ever study and read about ants? They're remarkable. They can work a job and have no foreman, no blueprints, and look what they've done. Truth and knowledge is from the fear of the Lord. Yes, Virginia, there is a Santa Claus. He exists as certainly as love and genuine, and we're back to quote, generosity and devotional exists. Devotion exists. And you know that they abound and give to you your life its highest beauty and joy. Ugh. Alas, how dreary would be the world if there were no Santa Claus. My, my daughter isn't dreary. My daughter don't believe in this mess. She's got Jesus Christ. She's saved. She'll pass out gospel tracts with a smile, but her life is so dreary because she does not have Santa Claus. It would be, uh, I'm going to read it. Alas, how dreary, dreary I got, would be the world if there were no Santa Claus. It would be as dreary as if there were no Virginias. I knew a Virginia one time, and that woman was a, next to, I can't even say the word. That woman was, a, was one of the bosses in the store I worked, and she'd make employees cry. She was so vicious. I wouldn't want a whole world of that Virginia. I knew another Virginia, and she was sweet as anything. Went home to be with the Lord. There would be no childlike faith then. Because there's no Virginians or because there's no Santa Claus. No poetry. And no romance to make terrible, terrible this exists. So Santa Claus brings us poetry, brings us romance, brings us tolerability. We should have no enjoyment except in the sense and sight. So whatever you see, that so there's no enjoyment in God because we can't see God for God's a spirit. This the yeah, I'm having a hard time with some of my talk. The eternal light which with which childhood fills the world would be extinguished. John chapter 1 says that light is Jesus Christ. This guy in this article, and I, I put it on my website. You can download and print 
this book. This newspaper responder has attacked religion and it has been printed and has been reprinted. But what have you heard? An incomplete report or study as I've done. The newspaper writer does not examine the facts. God is love or Santa must be God. No Santa Claus. Dreariness. You mean an imaginary person makes me happy and not Jesus. He makes me joyful. And without him, is there dreary there for those idiots allowed to write and publish stupid articles in the newspaper? Because I would assume that in the New York Sun, of all the employees from the big head, the publisher of the company, all the way down to the to the to the delivery people, there has to be somebody in that place that does not believe in Santa Claus, and a member of that group has said, "Oh, it's a dreary life, a world without Virginias would be lost and dead." No. There is no life without Jesus Christ. Not to believe in Santa Claus, you might as well not believe in fairies. You might get your papa to hire men to watch in all the chimneys on Christmas Eve to catch Santa Claus. But even if they did not see Santa Claus coming down, what would that prove? Nobody sees Santa. But that is no sign that there is no Santa Claus. The most real things in the world are those that neither children nor men can see. Did you ever see fairies dancing on a lawn? Of course not, but that's no proof that they are not there. Nobody can conceive or imagine all the wonders there are unseen and unseen in the world like God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ that's not even fairies dancing on your lawn that's good that this this guy is printed in the newspaper and he doesn't mention no word of God in Jesus Christ as a matter of fact rebukes those that re, that believe there are no fairies there are no Santa Claus there would be no Santa if no one saw him I know by faith I will see Jesus Christ. Peter, James, John, Paul saw Jesus Christ. No one has seen Santa. I know with my own eyes I shall behold. By this report and by study, there is no proof. There is no Santa Claus. Jesus Christ is real. Oxygen that I cannot see is real, but Santa is not. If the writer is making Santa Claus a spirit, then we have a whole new realm here. A realm of Satan. The writer has turned this guy into a spirit. We've already seen Father Christmas as God the Father. We've already seen him take on the stories of Jesus Christ, erase Jesus, put St. Nicholas or Santa Claus in that story. Now we see from a newspaper, we see Santa Claus become a spirit that you don't see dancing on your lawn. What could that be? An imitation of the Holy Spirit, my friend. Santa Claus is an imitation of a satanic trinity. The Father, the imitation of Jesus Christ, and now he's a spirit. And oh, you take pictures up, the, up your chimney, you'll not find him, but he's still there. Twenty-nine pages of this report, and we see the unholy trinity in Santa Claus. And I didn't say these things. And at the end, if you print this out, you'll see all the end notes and quotes. I didn't say this. We go on. 
You may tear apart the baby's rattle and see what makes the noise inside. But there is a veil covering the unseen world, which not the strongest man, nor even the united strength of all the strongest men can ever that has ever lived could tear apart. Only faith, fancy, poetry, love, romance can push aside that curtain and view and picture the supernatural, the su supernatural beauty and glory beyond it. Let me try it again. Only faith, fancy, poetry, love, romance can push aside that curtain, view and picture the supernal beauty and glory beyond. Is it all real? Ah, Virginia, in all this world there is nothing else real and abiding. No Santa Claus? Thank God. He lives, and he lives forever. A thousand years from now, Virginia, nay, ten, thousand, ten times ten thousand years from now, he will continue to make glad the hearts of childhood, end of quote. He finally throws a god into this godless mess to praise that Santa Claus lives forever as God the Father and God the Son as God the Holy Spirit. Now, if Santa Claus has not become God, this writer makes him God. He is going up to God the Father and God the Son God the Holy Spirit. Take them off the throne and put Santa Claus up there. Thanking God for no one. I mean, it's, Santa Claus is no one. He is thanking God for, for a non-person. Like the evolutionists think that nothing, here we are. A lie. And I know this God of this lie. John 8, 44. Ye are of your father the devil. And the lust of your father you'll do. Lust. Eat. Drink. Be merry. Lie. He was a murderer from the beginning and bold not in the truth. Because there is no truth in him when he speaketh a lie he speaketh of his own for he is a liar and the father of it that was a mess eight-year-old virginia ohannon wrote a letter to the editor of the new york sun bail worship and the speedy reply was printed as an unidentified editorial September 21st 1897 the guy didn't even put his name to it wimp the work of a veteran newsman Francis P H A R C E L L U S church what a name Satan has chosen Mr. Church wrote what I just wrote to you, I uh, read to you, to Virginia. And yet Satan is in the churches today. Has since become history's most reprinted newspaper editorial. Appearing in part or whole in dozens of languages in books, movies, and other editorials, and on posters and stamps. That editorial has gone worldwide. And we're going to praise God for a nod man. And if there is no Santa Claus, life is miserable. Take a gun to your head and just blow your life away. Ready for this one? Drum roll, please. Francis P. Church was the son of a reverend and the grandson of a Revolutionary War soldier. He graduated from Columbia College, now known as Columbia University, 1859. Francis Church's father, P-H-A-R-C-E-L-L-U-S, was a Baptist 
minister and journalist who founded the New York Chronicle. New York Chronicle. Look at that. How many times has New York shown up? A Baptist who started a newspaper. A minister that did not resort to the life of his congregation. Did not put his life to studying and the ministry, but went to, to do a secular newspaper company job. What are that guy's fruit? Newspaper and a son that wrote about Santa Claus as a proof he exists and then no report about Jesus Christ. And I think we're going to end right there. I think it's a great place to end. What do you think, Christian? What do you think? Oops, not Is this something that you want your children to be part of? It's cute, it's fun, it's a giggle and all that. In the realm of unbelievers, this man has taken the place of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. We got the whole satanic trinity up to number nine in this series nine series we are in we've seen him as jesus christ we have seen him as god the father and now we see him by the newspapers with the foundation or the fruits of a tree that came from a baptist minister is this something what you really really want to bring into your Christian home. You think that this can bring the fruits of the Spirit rather than poetry and whatever other garbage that guy wrote. If this is going to, you know, if you want to do right and this is going to be difficult, it's going to be difficult. All they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. You email me. And tell me that you're going to need prayers to stand up and do right. Man, I'll put you right in, right in my prayer list. I got one of those little sticky note things from my computer, from my desktop. With names on it. I'm going to add a name today. I'll put your name right there in the sticky notes. When that comes up, I'll see your name. I'll pray for you. We got to pray together. We got to get the fight. We got to get in the suit. We got to get together as Christians, not ban against. I'm not writing this to, to kick and poke you and, poke and put you down. Or, I'm writing this that you put your armor on, stand up and, and fight. And realize that you are doing something that Satan approves of. And God does not. And you now know that this guy, allowing him in your house, has come into your house as the satanic trinity. Is that what you want? You want to get rid of this mess and you want prayer you email me I'll put you on my prayer list these videos are free to get out anywhere and everywhere to the honor of the Lord Jesus Christ and the glory of God and not Satan 